I recently talked about TikToker Paige Shay. I think I called her Freely 2.0. Today I want to talk about the dudes, the bros, a bro, and male Freely maybe. Shane Sterling, aka Raw Vegan Rising. His most successful platform seems to be TikTok. He's got 107,000 followers. Not huge, but a bit more than mine. As you may have guessed, Shane is a raw vegan. He's been raw for like seven years. He went vegan as a teenager and as he will tell you over and over and over again. I am a 50 year old man. I'm 50 years old. 50 years old. I'm 50 years old. You can see this is the real skin that I have after six years of being raw vegan. For one thing, we can't know for sure that he is telling the truth when he says he doesn't dye his hair, he doesn't do Botox, he doesn't do fillers. But even if he is telling the truth, a lot of looks, a lot of this stuff has to do with genetics. Gray hair is largely genetic. There are plenty of meat-eating, middle-aged, or elderly people who look great. Look at Mark Sisson, 70 years old, looks pretty great to me, definitely not vegan. So this is definitely already giving me freely vibes, right? The obsession with looks, using his looks to promote his diet. You can see the benefits here right before your eyes. Certainly eating more fruits and vegetables can help us lose weight, which may help us look better. But I got my first gray hairs when I was raw. But it's not all so shallow for Shane when he's not telling us about how great he looks. I'm so much younger looking than the guys in the gym. He's also educating us about the horrors of eating animal products and beans. Even if they tell you beans are healthy for your gut, absolutely not. It will pack your gut filled with slow digesting sludge and it's going to make you sick and unhealthy. I really envy this, right? Like just being able to say something and then fuck off. <laughs> beans are bad. Bye. Eat berries instead of beans, okay? I love how annoyed he seems here. <laughs> like, God, guys, you should already know this. Berries instead of beans <laughs> giving me big freely vibes. When you go raw vegan, you're not going to just automatically start feeling better. Depending on how much toxicity is accumulated in your body, things might need to get worse before they can get better. But this is the best path for you because every single day you got a runny nose or a sore throat, you're getting better. You're healing. You're releasing toxins out of your body. I think this is a potentially pretty dangerous way of thinking, right? Like, oh, you're passing out on a raw food diet? Well, it just means it's working. Like, keep going. You're expelling the toxins, clearly. That may sound extreme, but look at someone like Matt Monarch. You guys may remember him, Raw Food World with Angela Stokes. They had their huge raw food store where they promoted raw foods, obviously, and like detoxing. Every single week, it seemed like there was some new big detox protocol. And yet he always seemed to have health problems and still does. He still seems to be jumping from one like health breakthrough thing to another. Now it's carrot juice, I guess. Detox is a long process. It's not a quick one. And we really should celebrate the journey of detox because it's going to help you feel your best. So if you just say yes to your detox journey, oh my goodness, miracles wait for you on the other side. Now that's actually a clip from a video on his YouTube channel. It's called One Year Raw Vegan, What I Learned. I think most of his TikToks are clips from longer videos, so I figured... Let's go directly to the source. Maybe we'll find a little more substance than beans are bad because I said so. Mucoid plaque is real. We have got biofilm and plaque inside of our digestive system. Or not. He says mucoid plaque is real because he supposedly released it after a 40-day juice fast. No. No. Yeah, so unfortunately, it's the same stuff. Give the guy one minute for TikTok or 16 minutes for YouTube. It's still going to be, here's a thing because I said so. We aren't absorbing our food. We eat so much food and we get so little nutrition. 80% of the population is nutrient deficient because we have these biofilms in our GI tract inhibiting absorption. So he takes nutrient deficiencies to mean absorption issues, biofilm absorption issues, instead of, I don't know, maybe we aren't getting enough of certain nutrients. Like I'm pretty sure Americans don't get enough fiber because they don't get enough fiber because they don't choose foods with fiber. We choose refined bread and meat instead of beans. Shane's TikToks and long form content leave me with a lot of questions. Namely, what does he eat? 
Like we know he eats fruit. I am a fruit-based raw vegan. I rely on fruit. It's miraculous. It'll heal your life. And no beans, of course. Sprouted lentils. What? So I'll assume when he says beans, he means cooked beans. That's the, the bad stuff. But if they're sprouted, they're okay. Fine, whatever. That's certainly an improvement over freely, right? Eating something with more protein in it instead of just fruit and lettuce occasionally. <laughs> Potatoes, maybe. What I really want to know is what does his day look like? What does a raw vegan rising food day look like? And surprisingly, this is not easy to answer. I only found one, like what I ate today video, no TikToks, but I found a longer one on YouTube. It's from almost five years ago. He starts the day with a fruit smoothie, not surprising there. There is a lot of flax in there though, which is great. That's a big improvement over Freely's just all fruit smoothies. After his workout, oh yeah, did I mention that like Paige Shea, he does strength train. It's so important for raw vegans or any vegans who are not getting a lot of calcium, not getting a lot of protein. These are things that are really important for bone health. Well, lifting is also extremely important for bone health. So yeah, this is a huge improvement over Freely's running cycling lifestyle. Anyway, after his workout, he has some pineapple, then another smoothie, this time with water lentils, aka duckweed. You may have heard about this recently. Duckweed is an aquatic plant and it might be a source of B12 for vegans. So of course, some more like natural vegans who really don't like supplements have run with this, saying that duckweed is a source of B12. And of course, companies have also run with this, <laughs> claiming that their duckweed is a source of B12. This is all based on essentially this study from 2020. And while the group consuming duckweed did see their B12 levels increase, they weren't vegan. In fact, they increased their intakes of fish, milk, and egg during the trial. We can't say from the study whether the duckweed had anything to do with their B12 levels. What we'd like to see is duckweed consumed by people who consume no other source of B12 over a period of a few months to determine the impact on their methylmalonic acid levels. If duckweed has a significant positive impact reasonably equal to B12 fortified foods, then it would be worth duplicating the study with duckweed from another region and in a different laboratory. If the study's results were replicated, we'd be able to at least begin considering duckweed as a reliable source of B12 for vegans. Until then, it wouldn't be prudent. Just to be clear, Shane does not recommend this duckweed water lentils as a source of B12 in this video. He talks about it as like a, a natural protein source, right? Like a substitute for protein powder, basically. Which is fine if that's what you want to take. I don't see any harm in that. But what's not fine is that he seems to think B12 is optional. He recommends this brand on his Amazon shop and says that you only need it until your body is capable of thriving on its own. No, Shane, bad Shane. Vegans, raw or not, need to supplement for B12. Anyway, sometime after the green smoothie, he eats a few apples. And then for dinner, he has a salad with some raw crackers and some homemade fermented cashew cheese. The salad has some sunflower seeds on top. The dressing has a tablespoon of hemp seeds in it. So not only is he getting a lot of omega-3s, remember he had the flax in the smoothies as well, he's getting significantly more fat than Freely. Still low fat, 23% total fat. That's still low fat, but that's like double or more what Freely gets. Freely aims for 10% or less, like a lot of fruit-based people, 80 10 tenors. Protein is still very low, 7%. That's like 50 grams. Now, I did find a couple more recent TikToks mentioning his macros, and they paint a much better picture. They all say 15% protein instead of 7%. So that's like 100 grams of protein. That's much better. I'm wondering if he was having trouble with his strength training, right? He was having trouble like getting his bench numbers up or a squat or something, and then thought, hey, maybe maybe protein can be useful. <laughs> that would not surprise me, especially since he does recommend protein powder. He lists this hemp protein powder as a superfood on his Amazon store page, and he admits to taking creatine for strength in a reply comment. Even after all these years, his body still isn't capable of thriving on its own. Speaking of comments, the comments are definitely my favorite part, well, in his replies <laughs> to the comments on his TikToks. That's sad. Maybe it's you who are sad. Oh, shit. Shane, 
You got her. Shane says, omnivores have a filthy digestive system filled with impacted waste, biofilm, mucus, hardened protein, and acids. You gotta clean your bowels. You got a clean your bowels. Someone responds, but how do you clean your bowels? He says, that's a million dollar question. Follow the right protocol. Now I have to give him some credit here because he could have easily used this as an opportunity to promote one of his many money-making schemes. He's got his $30 monthly membership. He's got his one hour deep dive phone call for $297. He's got his 12 week coaching program, a mere $3,000. He also offers a six month business apprenticeship. It's very 2005 to me, right? Like selling the ebooks and the, the coaching and the programs for hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars. It's just missing the like PowerPoint presentation video that you can't skip, and the timer, the FOMO timer. <laughs> Shane promises to help you accomplish in six months what could take a lifetime on your own. Because the nature of this work depends on the client's commitment level to see the success they desire, my fees are non-refundable. But Shane, what if I buy this and I do the work and I still can't connect to my soul tribe? Is that just on me? <laughs> it's just a me problem? This is a service we provide for the Raw Vegan Heroes members who are who are hesitant, who are mousy. Invest in the private coaching support and own your destiny. In other words, pay me money or you're mousy. <laughs> I fucking love this guy. Side note, but this whole video is just something else, man. Like he criticizes thinking through things. You cannot be someone who tries to cling to certainty. Even if that's a high value for you, I need certainty. Oh boy, I need I need to be, you know, I need to think it through. I need to make sure this is the right thing. No, that's going to get you mediocre, pitiful results for the rest of your life. You need to be somebody who takes bold action toward your goals. Get the hell out of your own way. Anyway, supposedly, right, he's so compassionate. His diet makes him so compassionate. A portion of all membership fees are donated to vegan rescue sanctuaries every month to help the most commonly exploited and abused in animal agriculture. When you join Raw Vegan Heroes, you give back automatically. Which sounds very nice, but the cynic in me says, he doesn't tell us how much a portion? What, what does that mean? How much of each sale is he actually giving? One more comment I want to look at. This one is my favorite. It led me down a whole rabbit hole that I get to share with you guys now. <laughs> Hopefully it's as interesting to you as it is to me. Anyway, someone says people live longest on a Mediterranean diet. We've known this for many years. And Shane responds, incorrect. Look up longest living cultures diet. 95 to 99% vegan. Hunza tribe is mostly raw fruit based. Raw foodists and alternative medicine practitioners quacks have been pushing this for decades, that the Hunza tribe or the Barusho people of northern Pakistan, that they traditionally had high life expectancy rates due to their raw plant-based diet, and also that they could give birth at 60. Unsurprisingly, I found no evidence for the birth claim. This is just here in this review. I, it's really weird. But worse is that even the suspect longevity claims are parroted, are repeated on mainstream media outlets. For instance, this article on CNBC, it's actually one of the top results for Hunza longevity evidence. Anyway, contributor Samantha Shea says, studies have found that the average life expectancy here is around 100 years old. Presumably those are links to said studies. No, of course not. One is a study, but it is on radon levels in the area, not longevity. The researchers do mention longevity, saying that the 100 year life expectancy claim is a rumor. They also say the Hunza are disease free and do not suffer from cancer. Um, what? Samantha's other source is this one, Long Lived Populations, Extreme Old Age by Dr. Alexander Leaf. He wrote a popular National Geographic cover back in the 70s called Every Day is a Gift When You Are Over 100. It was about his experience with three supposedly long lived groups of people, the Vilkam, Vilkabambans, Vilkabam, bands. As it turns out, many of the centenarians that Dr. Leaf interviewed for that piece weren't actually that old. This study on the group of people in Ecuador concluded that age exaggeration was fully responsible for any increased longevity in the region, aka there was no increased longevity in the region. In fact, the true life expectancy there was lower than in the US. But what about the Hunza? Well, according to Dr. Leaf, 
Memories constitute Hunza's records. Memories and the king's words. There was no census records, so Dr. Leaf was not able to confirm anyone's age. And he repeats this here in the CNBC reference. No records. But supposedly a Hunza can expect to live 100 years. What the fuck, Samantha? Now, Dr. Leaf did say that the elderly Hunza seemed very fit, very active, very healthy for their age. Maybe this is due to their mostly fruit-based diet? Fruit is really the Hunza staple. It is eaten with bread far more so than vegetables as it is more abundant. This is from The Wheel of Health by Dr. G.T. Wrench, originally published in 1938. Wrench is supposedly quoting a British explorer, Reginald Schomburg, and his 1935 book, Between the Oxus and the Indus. But if we check the source ourselves, we will see that Schomburg did not say that. Wrench is a liar, was a liar, R.I.P. Schomburg does not say fruit is really the Hunza staple. He says in summer, perhaps once in 10 days, a piece of meat is eaten, but fruit is really the Hunza staple. In summer, not year round, as Wrench implied. A typical day, according to Schomburg, for a Hunza man included bread and vegetables with milk or buttermilk for breakfast, fruit, they ate a whole lot of apricots, and then more bread, vegetables, and dairy for dinner. It's a lot of bread, a lot of milk, a lot of apricot kernels and oil as well. And during the winter months, they ate meat every day. This seasonal change in diet is confirmed by a Hunza himself, Navid Alam, on his blog Hunza Bites. He says traditionally they ate two vastly different diets, a low-fat, mostly vegetarian one of fruits, nuts, vegetables, and grains during the warmer months, and then lots of dairy during the winter months. In other words, we have no idea about the average lifespan of Hunza people, and there's no indication that they ever ate a fruit-based diet. And as documented by historian Harvey Levenstein in his book Fear of Food, it doesn't seem that Hunza are particularly healthy either. In 1956, an American geologist spent almost a year in the Hunza Valley and noted thousands of cases of malaria, dysentery, trachoma, that's an eye infection caused by chlamydia, it can ultimately cause blindness, worms, sores that could have been malnutrition related. Each spring, practically the entire society ran out of food and endured a period of famine until the first barley harvest. Except for the king, of course. Then in 1960, a Japanese doctor reported much of the same, along with her horrific levels of infant and child mortality. Apparently, the Hunza Murr, the king at the time, begged some Americans to set up a hospital for his people because they were so sick. So there's no evidence traditional or current day Hunza eat a fruit-based diet, there's no evidence they live longer, and there's no evidence they're healthier. But this is what Shane does, right? He just says things, just like Freely, just like Paige. There's no way he's ever looked into anything to do with the Hunza for himself. He probably just heard like Doug Graham or someone like that (laughs) mentioned them, and so he just repeats it. So yeah, Shane, he does lift weights, which is great. He seems nice-ish. And I say this with love, but those who attempt a vegan diet and claim that a vegan diet doesn't work, these people are nothing more than cowards. He said it with love, though, so it's fine. He seems more spiritual than Freely. I know how amazing you are. And to do the healing work that you came here to do, you need to be raw vegan. It lifts your spirits. It It gives you the mental clarity, the focus, the divine connection to do the healing work that you came here to do. Not sure that's a positive thing. Again, he eats some amount of beans, sprouted beans. I'm not sure how much from my own experience trying to sprout beans years ago. Uh, Pretty hard, pretty hard on the tummy. I keep the grains and the legumes in small quantities. I'll add them on top of salads, but I generally don't eat large amounts of them at a time because it can be hard to digest large amounts of even sprouted legumes. At the end of the day, like Freely and Paige, Shane is promoting a nutrient deficient diet as the diet for everyone based on his own personal experience. Bad Shane. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and consider subscribing. Thank you so much to all of my patrons and members here on YouTube. I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two patrons and members. The first one is a vlog and then the second one is a controversial topic, just kind of whatever I feel like talking about. Anyway, thanks again. New video soon. During the frequent festivals, the public dances were led by an elder, a feature that did not contribute to the vivacity of the local dances. <laughs> I love reading anthropological studies and field notes, but you definitely need to be prepared 
Like there's always some good humor in, it, humor in there, but you, you have to prepare yourself for the uh, xenophobia, racism, sexism. If you're reading anything pre-1980, pre-1990, pre-2000, <laughs> 2010. He has so many of these where he's just looking and slowly kind of showing himself off and they're so creepy. If I go raw, if I start sprouting my beans, is does this happen? Is this part of the deal? That's my next TikTok. If y'all were wondering where this is from, it's from his band camp. Yeah, he makes music. He's got a bunch of songs. I listened to a couple of them. They're pretty like generic, new agey, I guess, instrumental, kind of what you would expect someone like this music to sound like. No offense, Shane. I do genuinely love this cover though. It's great. 